Okay, right. This is the Toro wheel horse ride on, right? I started shooting a video and realized I needed to take a 3 8 bolt out. So naturally enough, I got my 10 mil spanner. Uh, you probably can't see anything except my head. Hopefully not, I really hate being on video. But I realized I needed to take out a bolt, which is fine. And this mower came from a guy who's just, okay, he might've lost a bolt and just gone to the bolt shop and, you know, done shit like this. Like, I mean, there's nothing wrong with that. It's just, it's not a Stratton bolt. And I, I like keeping everything original. So previously, the first take that I decided to scrap because I couldn't find my 10 mil and much swearing later decided the video needed to be scrapped. This is what came off. So two welds, one, two, and that's what Toro thought would actually last, which is just ridiculous, I mean. If you've got one of these with one of those exhausts that goes down here under the shield, just get rid of the damn thing and get one of these because this is just a much better design. You get a little bag. This is an aftermarket Stratton exhaust. It's not a genuine exhaust because Briggs and Stratton want 200 bucks for the original exhaust. Not going to happen. So they even give you in the aftermarket kit. Shit, my boots. Of course I lost it. Here it is. They give you a washer and a bolt that would be for here. I am probably not going to use it because I've got the original bolt and I don't really see a reason why I should be using something that's aftermarket on it. Anyway, take your gasket and apply either way around. It's the same damn pattern. It's not different depending on. So I'm trying to keep this in frame and I really have very limited idea of where the camera is actually pointing. Oh, yeah. Um, this is like when you put a plug top on a cord, right? Make sure you put the, the bit on the cord first, right? Same with this. Put the damn locking plate on there. If you, if you scrap the locking plate, right, if you don't put it on, then the bolts will just vibrate their way out of the friggin' muffler. And trust me, I know from experience having rebuilt at least a few Briggs and Stratton motors in my time, that's what happens. So obviously this tab goes to the front. This is my solution. Now, I'm missing a deflector. That's what I really want for this thing because this exhaust is gonna hit the bonnet, okay? Which is out of frame, naturally. You guys have no idea what I'm pointing at. So make sure you don't cross thread the damn thing because Remember, you're only screwing this into aluminium alloy. It's soft, so be gentle. I don't know why everybody treats alloy like they're screwing into cast iron or steel. You're not, you're screwing into something that's inherently a very soft material. Just, just be gentle. Don't wring the crap out of the bolts. Yes, they have a torque spec. No one is ever gonna use it. So don't even, look, if you can be bothered getting your torque wrench out and if the damn thing's even accurate, which if you've got a crap torque wrench like mine, it probably isn't, get your torque wrench out by all means, but just, you don't need a torque wrench to get an idea of how tight to do a bolt. Look at the torque specification. If you've been doing this for as long as I have, you should be developing some idea of the, um, of what it feels like to be that tight, okay? No, you're not going to be right. Of course, you're not a torque wrench. Your arm's not calibrated, right? But at least you shouldn't wring the crap out of it because so many people strip threads and damage things by doing that. This bolt's a little on the tight side, but if you saw the cap screws that came out of there, you'd probably understand why. One of them's a fair bit rustier than the other. But at least this is going to quieten this damn thing down because... Yeah, it's pretty unbearable the way it was, so. The 13 mil I'm using, by the way, is the crappiest 13 mil I could find. I don't know if that's coming up in the shot. Yes, it's made in China. Not that there's anything wrong with that. So before any of my Chinese viewers, I do have some, okay, jump down my throat and say, oh, I'm not Chinese and what's wrong with China? Okay, Westerners get stuff made in China to specification. And 
the 50 year old man in the suit and tie in the office in Melbourne or Sydney doesn't want good quality stuff. They want us to pay good quality prices for crap stuff and unfortunately China's the cheapest place to make stuff just about en masse, okay? I mean, be mindful of the fact that it is aluminium, but also be mindful of the fact that, you know, you don't want the friggin' thing to run away, right? Now, if you're not lazy, go and get a pin punch and a hammer and carefully fold the wretched thing over, right? But being a lazy 34 year old guy, I am gonna do this. It's my machine. If I don't care about the paint that I just chipped around that friggin' thing, then why should you? I'm not gonna bother pounding the crap out of it. Now the only thing I've gotta do now is tighten this bolt. I used the original Stratton bolt, and uh, to be honest, I think I'm gonna go, yeah, it's a 3 8 bolt head, not, not a 10 mil, so it's not gonna do up properly. On the ground, because I've been pulling apart a whole lot of motor mowers, I've got another one of these Stratton bolts, so that's what I'm gonna replace it with. I can't bloody see where, where the actual threaded hole is. I assume you had it in the wrong spot. You'll look at my appliance, which is unfortunate, right? So, I mean, I really would love to get this heat shield actually bolted on properly. I don't know if this has ever had a bolt in it. Probably not, actually. It's a bit of a pain, but yeah. But anyway, it's got no threaded hole in there because Toro never used that hole. They, they had an exhaust bolted to what I'm putting the bolt on, so... I, I used an original Stratton bolt. If you guys watch that um, HVAC videos channel, I'm a bit like that guy where I prefer everything to be original. Now I'm going to start this thing up and see what it sounds like. I think this video's got like two minutes left. I don't have the key. I don't really need the key. Yes, I do. All right, there's going to be a separate start video. You guys are just going to have to live with the fact. So I'm going to zoom out. Now, it is missing the deflector. You do need it because the alternative, obviously the bonnet covers the exhaust. You'd need to cut basically that off and I'm not cutting the bonnet of the mower up right so the deflectors $13 I just honestly the reason I bought them separately is because I just couldn't afford to buy both at once the exhaust for $56 with express postage so anyway I'll go get